Hi, welcome to Nana's Journey. I'm Deanna and I got the package for block two for the designer mystery 2022 from Fat Quarter Shop. This is the backing and here is the pattern we're going to do for block two. Starfish and it is designed by Carla Eisnich, Susan Kendrick and Lisa Burnett. I do not think I pronounced that name right, but those are the guest designers for this month. So let's see what we've got. We're going to be working with these fabrics and we're going to be making sawtooth stars, um, which use flying geese and squares. We also have a square in the square. Um, but I'm not going to be using their directions. I am going to be using Debbie Tucker's wing clipper for the flying geese and her square squared ruler for the middle. So the cutting measurements will be a little different. Um, but I personally will get a better result because I'm not cutting out the perfect size and sewing a perfect seam and expecting it to come out perfectly. So I will be making it a little oversized and trimming it down to the size that we need. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to be using um, Debbie Tucker's Square Squared. Um, this is from Studio 180 Design and it's .net, not .com. And you use this part of the ruler to measure out your fabric for the very center of the square for D right there. And then she tells me what strips to, um, what size to cut the triangles depending on what size square I'm making. And I will use this as a guide for trimming it up once I've got it pressed. So we will get to that later. I will also be using a wing clipper which makes flying geese. Flying geese is this unit right here, the A and C. So you've got the beak and the two wings, or at least that's what I think it's supposed to be. <laughs> I just know that unit's a flying geese. So we'll have four flying geese for one star, four squares, and one square and a square for each star. And you'll notice three of the corners will be the background, and then the middle corner will be the same as the center squares on two of these. So let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna cut the measurement for the center block of the star. Okay, I've got my two squares cut out so that I can make the triangles for the square squared. Now I just need a ruler so that I can cut those diagonally and end up with four triangles. Now I will take the first two and put them right sides together points going towards the middle of the square. Sew along these lines and then I will open it up and press. And you want to press that open before you put on these ones because these will slightly go over that um, the previous triangles. That will be part of your um, fabric that you sew on. So let's get to the sewing machine. Line those up. If you want, you can fold both pieces in half and match up the fold. I'm just gonna eyeball it 
so that there's an even amount on each side. Okay, I'll just press that open and get back to you. Okay, this is what it looks like now. And again, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Okay, and now I just have to press that open. Okay, so here's the square. The square in a square. Um, and as you can see, it's not very pretty. You've, this is not a straight line. This kind of bow is here. These are different things, but we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna take our ruler to trim it up. And we're gonna put those X's in the middle, or where the points are, I mean. Turn it around. And now I have a perfect sized unit that's perfectly even. You have the quarter inch seams here, which is exactly what you want. And that is what I mean by making something oversized and trimming it down to the correct size. So this is how I like to do things. So that's why I'm using these rulers and not their instructions. So, very pretty. Now for the flying geese, I need I'm going to do the fast flying geese method, which means you can make four at a time. So I've got these and what I like to do is I like to draw my sewing lines. Some people don't do that. Some people will draw one line um, and sew a quarter inch on each side. Um, I've learned that for me, this is the best method for my results. I have tried the others and, and they work. This is just my preferred method. So what I'm gonna do is huh, put right sides together. You gotta make sure you do that. And, okay. Let's, we're gonna put right sides together. I'm gonna leave just a few threads on the outside there. And then I will sew along the lines. Then I will cut in between the lines and then I will press it open and that will give me like a sharp angled heart shape. Um, then we'll worry about the other two squares. So let's get to the sewing machine and get that taken care of. I will cut and press that and be right back. Okay, two square looking hearts. <laughs> so again, we're going to put this square, the seam lines this way. And then we're going to sew down the lines Again, I'm gonna leave just a few threads on each side here.
Okay, this is what we've got. Now I'm going to cut here, press that open, and that will give us our flying geese, and we will have four of them. Okay, they are cut and pressed, and now I got to trim them. You see, these are not very good rectangles. This side is good, but the rest, you know, could use some work. Plus, we need to trim off these, what they're called, dog ears. So, I'm going to use the wing clipper ruler. And I'm going to put these V guidelines here. And see, I still have the quarter inch seam line here. And all my fabric is, oh, it's almost in there, is inside. So now I can trim. Turn it around, match it up here, put the X in the point. Oh, didn't quite get that. And now I have a perfectly sized flying geese unit, flying goose, I guess it is. So now I just need to finish these up. Okay, now we've got our square and a square, our flying geese, and there is our star. Now this, the green ones are going to have one of the corners in this fabric, and the other three corners in the background fabric. And there is a quarter of our block. We'll make four of these. The blue ones will have four background uh, fabric in the corners, and the green ones will have one of those. So now I just need to flip right sides together. So excuse me, sew down. Um, I need to make sure I pin the points together and then um, and then sew so that when we open it up the points are meeting. And we will go from there. When I press though the this row and this row will be pressed to the outside these two will be pressed open so that this will go to here, this will go to here. And that will make this less bulk because that is a lot of um, fabric right there in that corner. So let's get started. Okay, well I've got these laid out, making sure that these are right side up. I'm gonna just go ahead and pin these the pin in the corner at the top and then put the pin in the corner at the top adjust them so that this is where it should be oh. need to make sure it whoops make sure it's in here there we go yeah, that fits better Okay, 
once you've got it hold tight and repin I'm gonna do this side too put the pin at the top corner and pin there get it all set straight and the reason you hold it and take the pin out and then pin it is if I went like this I would be moving that bottom fabric down and the top fabric up and they would no longer be aligned so you want to keep the pin straight get your fabric aligned hold it tight and then pin it in place okay so now we can start sewing You want to make sure you go across where the seams make an X. You want to go across that intersection. Okay, now we'll just press it open with the directions that I gave and then I will come back and sew the rows together. So I will see you back in just a bit. Okay, it's pressed. These ones are pressed open and these ones are pressed to the outside. And I'm just going to pin them both. Get the seams pinned in place. Okay, now I'll just sew along the edges and they will be pressed to the outside, away from the center square. Actually, it would have been better if I sewed with this side up so that I can make sure that these don't fold over. So I'm gonna do that this time. we've got our block. I just need to press it. Okay, it's all pressed, ready to go. Now I just need to trim it up. There will not be much trimming. Get my Debbie Tucker ruler and see how it bows out there. Just make it a little more square and cut off all those threads you know how the threads bug me okay and the first part of our block is done and when you see um, a block where there's you know, it can be a plain center square or whatever design in here. But if you've got the flying geese on the four sides, and then this is called a sawtooth star. And I'm not sure if it has other names. But now I just need to do the other three blocks, and then I will get back with you when we put them together. 
Okay, I've got all the blocks done. The two greens have one corner with this fabric, and the whites have fabric on all four corners. So now we need to put it together. We're gonna put the green here and here. And we're going to put this blue here and this blue here. So now we will sew it together and we also have a little four patch with alternate um, fabric. What I'll do is I will put these right sides together, sew, open it up. One seam will go to the right, one seam will go to the left. I'll put the row together, sew it, open it up, press, and then our block will be done. So, okay, gonna put right sides together. Pin the seams so that they match. have block number two all finished. We've made sure, well in the picture it's like this, we've got the four patch with the diagonal, the blue goes across, the green goes across, and we are ready to set it with the rest of the squares when we get them. Okay, I mentioned in an earlier video that I always make cutting mistakes, and I did. I even made a sewing mistake. So this is what the block should look like. This is what my first block looked like. Can you see the difference? I used the wrong fabric with the flying geese. Now, if I knew what the quilt was gonna look like, I might be able to decide whether I liked that or not. But not knowing that and not being sure where these are gonna meet up with, I decided I'd better not take that chance. So I redid it. And I would like to give a shout out to Fat Quarter Shop for supplying enough fabric for those of us who do make cutting mistakes. I really appreciate that. In fact, if they didn't, I probably would not join another club. <laughs> Just because of that, because I need the extra fabric. So thank you all for joining me and I'll see you when we do block three.